I work in my studio seven days a week, 10 hours a day, and uh, recently got a new studio maybe six months ago, so it's big enough to skateboard in there, and we have a ping pong table, foosball table, and so it's been quite fun. Everyone in the architecture department is highly motivated, always making work, and there's a focus on materials, which has highly influenced my work now. And then after that, I just um, worked architecture for like a year and then went to art school in New York. I built websites for people out of my apartment. I just wake up in the morning, walk to my desk in my underwear, sit down, start working. And uh, that got old real quick because it's just... When you can work on something 24 hours a day and you don't have to go anywhere else, it just sucks the life out of you. And then I was an assistant for a year and a half and then quit doing that probably a year and a half or two years ago and here I am. Yeah, he was great, super generous. Every time anyone came to the studio, he was like, this is Nick Van Wert, amazing artist. And I'd be like, no. Definitely. I think his approach to materials and my approach to materials through architecture is very similar, you know, keeping things raw, like looking at art as if it's a material language, not so much a visual language, or material language first anyway. In Nevada, it's very severe geographically, where you can see how nature has like formed the mountains and the rivers and the trees and everything is so dry and like there's forest fires and it's just like, you just, I, so I was attracted to that growing up, but I didn't know how much I liked it until I moved away from it. When I get these fiberglass statues, they're kind of amazing works of art just to begin with because they reference the past, but they start to say that, you know, we're interested in preserving a visual likeness to the past, but not a material likeness because they're all made out of fiberglass. And so I thought I started to see a kind of evolution of ideas and an evolution of materials and over the past like hundred years in art and architecture. And so to start with something like that and then just break it open or add to it or whatever, then, you know, it kind of continues that discussion. I've got uh, these boxes filled with materials and all the materials have come from my house or some materials are ones I've grown up with but maybe everyone has and it's um, everything has been desaturated so all the work is like black and white which I think has to do with a lot of my ideas about um, the natural world versus the man-made world and there's like as man-made materials become more and more saturated and more brilliant in color and more like poignant and maybe even more poisonous or whatever the natural world at the same time I think can become or is becoming a bit desaturated. It's not as vibrant and it's not as maybe alive as it once was. If you look at like a Bierstadt painting or a coal painting, you see these like vibrant colors running the spectrum from black to green, red, every color you see in one of those paintings. And so these boxes with the materials I think are a, kind of a reinterpretation of a landscape painting. I think anatomy is very much like archaeology, which goes back to those boxes again I was talking about, because they're stacked in a way that makes it read like a, um, almost like a cross section through the surface of the earth, so you can see the kind of strata of material that's stacked one on top of the other. I think I started looking at the, the world we've made as a reflection of who we are. And so for me, if you dissect the world around us, if you cut open architecture and maybe your house and you start to look at the materials, it's going to be a reflection of how we're thinking and our motivations and our priorities and attitudes about material and all that. There's nothing we're more familiar with than our own bodies. And um, so when you look at that painting, you see these guys looking at a body on a table that's being cut open and the, the look on all of their faces is that, that they're totally engaged, totally interested and they're, because they're seeing what they know so well in a way that they've never seen it before and they're looking at the inside of the body, that's like the one thing we cannot access. 
for me, looking at that painting is the way I would love sculpture to be made. So they're cutting open something so familiar to show it in a new way. And that's the way I'd like to approach my practice. Rarely. For me, I think the making of the work should be the work. Like, I'm, like the preparation that goes into it, if there's any editing, I like those things to be apparent within the piece. And so to draw, to make drawings and prepare, it feels like a design project or maybe like architecture or whatever. And it takes the fun out of making it. Then the making of it just turns into labor and like, I'm not interested in labor. It just gets boring.